The world saw just how important NATO involvement in the Russia-Ukraine war was when a British anti-tank missile blew up a Russian tank. Watch till the end to learn more about this deadly weapon. Between January 17th and 19th, the Royal Air Force's 99 Squadron's C-17 cargo planes, located in Breeze Norton, were extremely busy conducting flights in and out of Ukraine. Footage from Borispil International Airport, located just east of Kyiv, showed the planes offloading up to 10 cargo crates, each containing up to 18 portable anti-tank weaponry known as the Next Generation Light Anti-Tank Weapon, or NLAW. On January 19th, British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace stated that the United Kingdom had already provided 2,000 NLAWs to Ukraine, a figure he hinted may climb further. The missiles were London's way of delivering defensive help to Kyiv since Russian forces stationed near Ukraine's borders at the time gave the appearance that a fresh invasion was imminent. It was indeed. The British Army also sent 30 paratroopers to coach Ukrainian forces on how to use the NLAWs, which were obviously picked for their ease of use and hence their ability to be quickly deployed by Ukrainian forces dealing with the current crisis. The missile deliveries underlined London's backing for Kyiv, and were appreciated by Ukraine's military, which has faced significant hurdles in defending against Russia's multiple assault routes. However, the Ukrainian military would only employ these weapons in extreme circumstances, such as now. The NLAW, also known as the NBTLAW or RB57, resulted from a collaborative British-Swedish project launched in 2002. Its main goals were to start replacing Cold War-era weaponry meant to provide infantry squads with a portable, close-range defense against tanks. Built with components from BAE, Saab, Thales, and Raytheon, each single-shot weapon was priced at £20,000 in 2008, the equivalent of $37,000 at the time, and had a 20-year shelf life. Aside from Sweden and the United Kingdom, NLAWs have been supplied to Finland, Luxembourg, Indonesia, Malaysia, and most recently, Saudi Arabia, which has employed NLAWs in the conflict in Yemen. The disposable weapon is a meter long and weighs just 27.5 pounds. It can shoot a single 150 millimeter diameter projectile to an optimum range of 20 to 600 meters or up to 400 meters for moving targets. According to reports, newer NLAWs feature guiding software that extends the accuracy range to 800 meters. The NLAW, unlike other light anti-tank weapons, includes a predicted line of sight guiding system that requires the user to monitor a moving target vehicle in the launcher's 2.5 times magnification sight for at least three to five seconds before firing. The missile is then ejected with compressed gas before its rocket motor ignites, propelling it to 440 miles per hour or 200 meters per second. This enables the cannon to be used securely from within buildings without endangering employees with the rocket's backblast. The missile then utilizes an inertial tracking system to fly to the location predicted by the launcher's targeting algorithm based on its previous trajectory. To combat tanks and armored vehicles, the soldier picks the top attack option and strikes the least armored spot on the vehicle's roof. The missile flies at around one meter above the line of sight while in overfly top attack, or OTA mode. The missile's sensor fires the warhead over the target's roof. It fires a straight down charge over a target object. Because top armor is often rather thin, centimeters, an NLAW might damage tanks with upfront shielding that surpasses the missile's estimated penetrating strength, comparable to 50 centimeters RHA. This allows for the targeting of vehicles that are primarily hidden behind cover. Most decoys are ineffective against the NLAW's navigation system. However, a target vehicle may potentially halt or alter course to avoid being struck. Because of the NLAW's low approach path, it may be vulnerable to some kinetic kill active protection systems employed on subsequent tanks. 
But the question arises as to whether the Enlaw missiles help Ukraine. Since the introduction of the Bazooka, Panzerfaust, and Piat in World War II, short-range infantry anti-tank weapons have demonstrated their worth by pushing enemy armored vehicles to preserve their distance, making armored assaults with friendly infantry screens more dangerous. During the Cold War, successors like the RPG-7 and LAW provided rebels with effective portable weapons for defeating armored vehicles that they couldn't damage otherwise. While Enlaw has a higher range and much better long-distance precision than RPG or LAW-type weapons, it still falls far short of the long-range reach of strong anti-guided missiles, or ATGMs, like the POW, Javelin, or Hornet, which can defeat main battle tanks from long distances. The long range not only enhances assault possibilities, but also increases the chances that an anti-tank unit will be able to break contact with combatants and avoid discovery and counterattack after shooting. Unfortunately for Ukraine, the new Russian non-contact warfare military strategy prioritizes long-range artillery destruction supported by drone observation capabilities, rather than aggressively pressing tanks and soldiers forward to engage in direct combat. According to this strategy, the majority of enemy troops are destroyed at distances at which the target cannot shoot back. Of course, Ukrainian forces will employ landscape and camouflage to evade long-range gunfire and ambush Russian soldiers at more advantageous combat distances. However, Ukraine is mostly made up of wide plains with little natural cover. However, in urban environments where constructions limit lines of sight, Shorter range firearms like the Enlaw become extremely potent and can exact a heavy toll on armored vehicles. This was best seen in the first battle of Grozny in December 1994, when Chechen insurgents primarily used short range rocket launchers to destroy dozens of Russian tanks. However, depending on urban warfare is far from ideal. That implies recognizing that large cities will be heavily damaged in the conflict and that thousands of innocent people will die. Furthermore, Russia's military eventually deployed a strategy for dealing with strongly fortified cities. When Russian forces re-entered Grozny in 1999, they leveled it with artillery while sneaking dismounted men forward carefully to discover fresh enemy positions. Enlaws will thus benefit Ukrainian soldiers if they can nullify Russian forces in very close quarters, but will be useless in opposing Russia's favored strategy of blasting foes from a great distance. In comparison, the significantly more expensive Javelin missiles are far more versatile weapons with a range of 2.5 miles. They too may be subdued by drone-assisted artillery shooting from larger distances. Ukraine's unfortunate situation is that the longer-range surface-to-air missiles and precision land attack weapons it requires to shore up its vulnerabilities to Russian attacks are too expensive and complex to be easily transferred. In less than five seconds, the operator can move the weapon system from the transport position to the shooting stance and have it ready to fire. After shooting, the soldier loses the launcher but can keep the night sight if necessary. The 115-150mm caliber launcher is made of composite materials. The launcher has an optical sight for the gunner, a fold-away launch device, grips and a firing mechanism, a battery pack, carrying straps, and firing support. Any night sight may be added to the launcher via a mounting rail. The shooter can detach and engage in combat as many times as they want. The missile may be launched against targets with ranges ranging from 20 meters to 600 meters. When an unforeseen target arises, the missile can alternatively be launched instantly without tracking. The NBT LAW features a soft launch and may be fired from limited locations, including within buildings or any position or angle up to 45 degrees. Flight time to a range of 400 meters is a little less than two seconds. The muzzle velocity at the start is 40 meters per second. Maximum missile speed is less than the speed of sound. The gunner follows the target for three seconds in predicted line of sight or PLOS mode, 
and the missile's navigation systems record the shooter's movement as he shoots and computes the flight path to the expected location of the target. The gunner is not required to consider the target's angular speed range. The missile travels independently to the target after firing. Regardless of range, the missile's location along its trajectory always corresponds with the target. To attack light vehicles, structures, and bunkers, the soldier might use the Direct Assault or DA option. In Direct Assault mode, the missile flies directly towards the target along the line of sight. After a brief delay, the missile's fuse mechanism is deactivated, and the payload detonates upon impact. The missile features a proximity fuse that is activated by magnetic and optical sensors. Before the warhead is launched, the sensor data is examined to ensure that it matches the known relevant target criteria. Even against metal targets and partially camouflaged targets, the missile warhead is triggered. A shaped charge jet that emerges during missile flight causes a keyhole effect, resulting in limited penetration into the target in conventional overflight missiles. To preserve penetrating qualities, the MBT-LAW warhead, like the Bill 2 missile warhead, features a dynamically corrected shaped and copper-lined charge. The NLAW was designed to be the successor to the LAW-80, which itself was a successor to the Carl Gustav M2 recoilless gun that had been in use since the 60s. The LAW could only fire straight at a target, which made it increasingly ineffective against modern armor. Russia will be wary of this state-of-the-art weapon that they could not have anticipated. What remains to be seen is if the NLAW is significant enough to turn the tide of the war.